Hello, I'm Christy Duncan, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be chatting today with Kim Kuzmak, who's VP of Client Management within Global Merchant Services at Amex, based in Toronto. Welcome, Kim. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Awesome. Kim, it's hard to believe the year's almost over, which for a lot of us means a time for reflection on what's being achieved in the year and our intention setting for the year coming up. I'd like to take stock of the changes that we saw in the payments landscape over the past year and look ahead to market trends and forces that will be continuing to shape the industry into 2023. So before we dive in, can you give us a little background on your role at Amex and how you got there? Absolutely. So as you had said earlier, I am the Vice President of Client Management for the Global Merchant and Network Services here in Canada. I think the easiest way to explain my role is, you know, really it's my job and my team's job to make it easy for our card members to use their cards at merchants all across Canada. So I lead a team of approximately 25 across the Canadian market, and we're really focused on building strong relationships and delivering value to those top merchant partners. I am an 18 year veteran of American Express. I started my career actually in Western Canada where I was an account manager on the global commercial services side. I took a variety of different roles to get to where I am. I relocated my family four years ago, which positioned me very well to secure the VP role. And I am uh, currently enrolled for just over a year. Very cool. What a great path and a long time Amex employee. I love it. Looking back at 2022, can you tell us what's been the most exciting advancement that you've seen in the payment space? Um, you know, I think there's been a lot of excitement. Uh, for me personally, I think the rise of the digital first customer is exciting. It's really forced merchants to think about their digital strategies and invest in their digital strategies to ensure that they're meeting the emerging needs of their customers. Um, in Canada, I think the pandemic has really accelerated our a cashless society, and we've seen contactless really move from like that emerging stream to be more mainstream and day to day, mm -hmm. especially as customers are demanding cleaner ways to pay. And so for that, you know. People are either tapping their card, they're tapping their phone. We know that in the past year, 2.5% of Canadians tapped their mobile phone last year, but that number really jumps to 25% when you look at the age group of 18 to 34. So we know it's that younger generation that's driving that digital first mindset and pushing the payments technology to move. Um, a recent study that American Express conducted also indicated that you know, a majority of Canadians this year are going to use their mobile wallet to pay for holiday expenses this year. So I think that's really exciting. Um, going back to like maybe an industry that's really like pushed the narrative around, you know, cashless, I think transit is something that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. We saw locally that Metrolinx launched their open payments um, back in August, which has enabled uh, their passengers to use contactless payments to pay for their fares. And through our partnership with Metrolinx, our card members can tap, pay, and go at all Presto machines for Go Transit as well as the UP Express. Um, you know, a few years ago, we saw TransLink out in Vancouver move. We're now seeing Metrolinx. I think the transit space as a whole is going to be really interesting to watch as more agencies adopt open payments. And for us at American Express, I think it's really important that we continue to move with the technology and all of our cards today are actually enabled for contactless payments. Awesome. Well, we love the convenience that it offers. So thanks. Keep, keep pushing on that <laughs> agenda. <laughs> so we've talked about some of the fantastic advancement we've seen in the last year alone. Where do you think we have the most opportunities going forward? I think, you know, when the pandemic started, a lot of customers quickly migrated to shopping online and people got really used to the simplicity um, and the convenience of e-commerce. And now that stores have reopened and people are migrating back to shopping in person, I think a challenge that really lies ahead is how do you create that convenient 
and simplistic approach to shopping, regardless of which channel, you know, your customer wants to, to, you know, shop in. And a recent study that Amex conducted showed that 63% of consumers plan to shop in store for their holidays this year, and 37% plan to do all their holiday shopping online. So that really highlights the need for retailers to come up with a seamless way for their consumers to interact with their brands ongoing. And a term that I've been using a lot recently is the word digital. And it's really about blending that experience of in-store with that experience of online. So it could be your favorite store implementing digital capabilities that allow for easier convenience to purchase, or it could be your favorite e-commerce merchant having a pop-up store during the holiday season that allows for their customers to actually physically interact with their products. I think um, a company that's done it really well is McDonald's, where they've really brought that, you know, digital experience where you can go into one of their locations and if you choose, you can order through the app on their phone, you can order on one of their digital terminals, or if you want to actually have that in-person experience, you can actually go up to the till and order from one of, one of their uh, employees at the till. So I feel like that's going to be coming more and more important as we look to the future as well. Um, there's a variety of different emerging technologies. We know that AI and virtual reality are starting to change the way in which uh, people are interacting with products as well as, uh, you know, how people are paying. So I think, you know, it's going to be really important as we look forward um, that retailers and merchants as a whole are thinking about how do they create that frictionless and convenient way for consumers to shop. Yeah, we're reimagining the whole customer experience from the ground up almost. So Kim, when you think about 2023, what are the big customer trends that you're watching? Yeah, I think obviously there's a few trends that we're watching closely. Um, the first one I'll talk about is loyalty as a currency. We know that Canadians are extremely focused on extracting the most value that they can out of their purchases. And I'm just going to read a couple of stats to you because we know that the importance of rewards was highlighted in a recent study that we conducted at American Express where um, we know that Canadians are heavily influenced or their purchasing behaviors are heavily influenced by um, their ability to earn rewards as well as their ability to redeem rewards in an effective way. So through that study, we learned that eight out of 10 Canadians or 79, actually 79% of Canadians surveyed agreed that they wanted to earn credit card reward points for their online purchases. As well, 77% of Canadians uh, shared that they agreed that they wanted cash back this year for holiday purchases and two thirds of Canadians surveyed also agreed that they wanted to use their credit card reward points to offset prices this year. So um, I think it's really important and it's really a key area that Amex is focused on is like knowing how important rewards are to Canadians and ensuring that your customers have that flexibility to earn and redeem more rewards the way that they want to. And that's definitely an area that American Express is focused on. Another trend that I'm closely watching is the growth in card alternatives, uh, such as wearables. Payments Canada recently published a report that showed a growth in the volume of wearables of 33%, as well as the growth in the value of wearables at 41%. So we know that this is going to be an area that continues continues in that upwards trajectory. Um, last year, American Express launched uh, a wearable bracelet uh, designed by Prada, which allowed our card members to basically tap their bracelet like they would a card or their mobile phone. So I think as the demand continues to grow, this is going to be an area that we continue to watch closely. Fantastic. And then we're when we're on our way out to the gala, we don't have to be stuffing our cards into our bags. We'll just wear the, the Prada bracelet on the Prada our bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, lots of exciting stuff to, to look forward to come next year. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about financial institutions, which need to continue to innovate just to keep pace with the more agile fintechs. And we've all seen that one way or another. 
How are you doing that at Amex, Kim? Well, American Express is really focused on building a culture of innovation. And I feel that, you know, definitely fintechs bring a lot of value in the fact that they're very small, they're nimble, they can quickly solve for niche problems or build out a new customer experience relatively quickly. But then you look at the advantages of a big financial institution like American Express, who houses like a mass amount of data that allows us to really come to the market quickly when you're thinking about diversifying a product or personalizing a product. So I think both fintechs and large institutions like bring those advantages to innovation. Um, what's great about American Express is that while we're this huge organization with a ton of data, we also have parts of our organization, organization that are you know, solely focused on innovation, like our Amex Labs group. And, you know, we really rely on Amex Labs to help us decide when we should be building a product, partnering with a fintech, or potentially even buying a business to ensure that we can stay ahead and meet the emerging needs of our customers in a quick way. Um, I think one area where we've been very, very innovative is in fraud protection. And we launched a tool called Gen X, where we analyze 8 billion transactions a year and it's really helped us, you know, stay a leader in the fraud protection business. And we have the lowest fraud rates of any other car network out there. Wow. Congratulations. That's admirable, especially since cybercrime and fraud are, are really on the rise these days. So thank you for sharing that. Are there any teasers that you might want to share about what Amex has planned in the year ahead? Yeah, so as I like look to 2023 and I think about what my team is focused on, I think it's really the digitization of B2B payments. And for me personally, one area that I'm like highly focused on is like virtual cards. We know that it's definitely um, an area of growth. We expect it to grow four times over the next four years. So uh, for my team in Canada, we're really looking to see, you know, from a virtual payments pr perspective, like who do we need to partner with to make sure that, you know, our merchants, our partners can, you know, accept virtual payments in a very seamless way, um, as well as even from like automation of account reconciliation. So that's another area that we're focused on in, in trying to figure out like, you know, who should we be partnering with to make that whole process more simplistic for our merchant partners. Um, globally, we're also investing significantly in digitization of B2B. Uh, earlier this year, we launched a product called Global Pay in the U.S., which allows us to um, allow our customers to make uh, domestic and foreign payments in a very seamless way. It is a mobile platform that uh, allows buyers and suppliers in real time to make decisions on how they want to pay and in what currency. So it operates across 40 different currencies. And I think that, you know, another big benefit is our, our customers can also earn membership reward points. So I look forward to seeing products like Global Pay come to Canada uh, in the future, but I think it's just going to be an area of continual innovation and uh, I'm excited to see what happens next. Wow, Kim, this has been a really interesting discussion and I love all this digitization, both on the consumer as well as the B2B side. There's so much opportunity and um certainly the customers are going to be the beneficiaries overall. So thank you for sharing. I'd like to close this discussion with a question that we ask all of our Pause for Payments guests. And that is, you've got this fabulous career at Amex that you've been building over the last number of years. Are there some secrets of, of career success that you might like to share with our rising stars in our audience? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think from a career perspective, my biggest piece of advice is really be intentional with your career and make sure that when you're looking for a new role or choosing a new position, make sure it's a position that's going to allow you to learn something new as well as build your brand within an organization. Um, and I think it's really important that you don't set too high of expectations for yourself, um, that you have to be at a certain level by a certain age, like enjoy the ride um, and take the time to, you know, maximize the experiences that you have 
uh, in, in your role today, as well as what potentially might be your next role, even if it's a lateral move. Um, but overall, general advice would be, you know, be curious, ask questions, take the opportunity to learn, and take the opportunity to build a network that can help you um, with your future aspirations. Wow, that's a lot packed into a little a little time. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I love I love the be ten, be intentional. I love the be curious that kind of taps in at many different levels on on the lifeline learning, lifelong learning, as well as even the short term, like just ask questions rather than assume or uh, getting you out of your your day to day knowledge base is is really really fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. It's been a great discussion, Kim. Thanks, Christy. Well, what a fantastic way to end the year. This has been a fantastic discussion, and I'm going to thank our audience for, for listening as we explore the wonderful world of payments with Kim, as well as other inspirational women from around the world of payments. Thanks so much, Kim. Thank you.